to Corinthians chapter 10 today. Let's hear God's word um, as we um, consider what he has to say to us. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold towards you when you are away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. You are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. Do not want to seem to be trying to frighten you with my letters. For some say his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he's unimpressive and his speaking amounts to nothing. Such people should realize that what we are in our letters when we are absent, we will be in our actions when we are present. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they're not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond proper limits, but will confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us, a sphere that also includes you. We're not going too far in our boasting as would be the case if we had not come to you, for we did not get as far as you with the gospel of Christ. Neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. For we do not want to boast about work already done in someone else's territory, but let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who's approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. This chapter gives us uh, some sense of the, the tensions there are in Corinth and uh, the, the difficulty of their relationship with Paul. There are clearly some in the church critical of Paul and questioning his authority or uh, influence over the congregation in Corinth um, and uh, clearly there are those who are saying that Paul is timid when he's present but uh, bold when he's writing uh, letters, verse 1. And verse 10, his letters are weighty and forceful, but when he turns up, he's unimpressive and his speaking amounts to nothing. And uh, so there's criticisms of, of Paul's style or uh, allegations about uh, his style and what he will be like. Um, and, and Paul in, in this chapter then has to remind people about how we deal with issues within the life of the church and uh, the, uh, the way that we engage in discussion and uh, Paul reminds them that uh, although we live in this world verse 3 we do not wage war as the world does uh, we we have a very different way of engaging with each other and um, that needs the church should look very different from the world uh, around us um, uh, we um, need to remind ourselves that we have weapons with divine power that divine power is, is the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Um, and that is our authority and that is our, our tool. Um, that is uh, the, the power that we have been uh, given as we seek to engage with uh, arguments and um, um, uh, speak God's words into a situation. And uh, so our authority rests on the word of God. Um, that is the way in which we engage with one another. It should set the tone of our discussions. It should set the um, content of our discussions it guides us in how we are to resolve difficulty whether it's a proverb like uh, a soft answer turns away wrath or whether it's the um, pattern in Matthew 18 where someone has sinned against you to go and challenge them yourself and if they won't accept take a couple of witnesses and if they won't accept take it to the church the church is to be um, involved in that Paul has clearly written to the church about the and repentant sinner in the previous letter and uh, they've been put out and now he's writing to welcome back in there are these patterns that we are given that uh, are to be our standards and i think it's particularly worth um, rather than going into too much more of this chapter stopping there and thinking about this i, I think it's a great sadness that uh, christians through lockdown on social media have been vitriolic in the same way that the world has been 
and uh, the way that uh, slurs have been cast and uh, criticisms have been uh, lodged and um, just the way people have been speaking about each other on social media uh, has been a real sadness in the wider Christian world. I'm very grateful I'm not on Twitter and I don't see a lot of what goes on on there. Um, but we do need to be very careful uh, as Christians and as a church family. I'm very grateful that uh, often we're not beleaguered by these issues, but uh, that we need to be reminding ourselves that there is a way to conduct ourselves. There is a way uh, to engage uh, over issues together. And there is a way in which we uh, take the gospel to the world. And actually, that needs to be our our, our big focus, that uh, it's not about uh, boasting in our own gifts and our own influence and authority within the life of the church and bigging ourselves up to be able to improve the appearance so we look more impressive and can have more of a sway. You know, the, the big desire in all of this is that uh, we might get the, the gospel out. Paul's desire is that the gospel is going to be preached in regions beyond you, verse 16. Uh, he's not looking to muscle in on what someone else has done, uh, fight over who's got authority on that patch. You know, he, he wants people to hear the good news of Jesus. And um, actually, so many of our problems come because we're not focused on the outward. We're navel gazing and falling out over the inward. Uh, there was usually a coup in the Roman Empire when there was peace and there were no enemies because you had lots and lots of soldiers and army commanders who were twiddling their thumbs and uh, sitting um, looking for trouble. And uh, often there would be uh, just that. And uh, so it's, it's important as a church family um, and as individual Christians that our focus is on the gospel and getting the good news of Jesus out. That's the warfare we need to wage. Uh, we shouldn't be fighting each other. We shouldn't be um, picking fights over who's got authority and who's impressive and who should be listened to and all those sorts of things. The word of God is our authority, uh, both in terms of how we sort things out, also the, the, the benchmark by which we weigh arguments. And uh, we... Uh, we need to be so careful in all of this. So, so let's look at our own hearts. Let's consider uh, how we move forward. Uh, and let's pray for help in all of this. Father, we pray that our eyes would be on growing faith, a growing gospel proclamation, a growing response to the gospel, uh, that our, our passion and our energies would be uh, invested in uh, those activities. Um, not in um, political fights within the life of a church family, not in seeking to elevate our own position or reputation, not seeking to get our own way on matters, uh, not critiquing various leaders as to uh, whether they're impressive or not and we should be following them or not. Father, we pray that you'd help us to be in submission to your word, um, help us to be um, students of it, but also servants of that word, servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord, that uh, our heart might be uh, one of a longing that others might come to know him too, and that we would be peacemakers within the church. We pray, Lord, that you'd guard us against just becoming like the world around us in the way that we engage over issues. Uh, grant us love and concern and respect and kindness, and we ask for your help in this. Father, we pray these things then in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>